Hi guys, welcome back to Wigs with Steph. I am Steph. Today we're gonna be talking about what makes a wig look fake because I think that there are so many things like I could go over, I could talk to you about, but I'm gonna mention the main ones, the most important things. Because let's be honest, like a lot of the wigs that we purchase are online nowadays, unless it's like an in-person boutique, but I truly find that the best options a lot of the times are online or I'll be on my phone on Instagram or YouTube and I'll come across like a beautiful wig and I'm like, oh my goodness, that would look so good on me. I am interested in purchasing this wig. So today I'm going to tell you exactly what I look for when purchasing a wig so that we can avoid all of these things that might make a wig look fake. First off is the density or the thickness of a wig. So when I'm looking at a wig, because I have some smaller features, like my face is quite small, like the circumference of my head is under 21. I have small bones, I have small hands, I have small feet, like I'm just a small person. And so if I were to purchase a wig that has too much volume or too much hair, it really does tend to look a little fake on me. When I was a young girl, I had nice hair <laughs> like I had really nice longer hair and it happened to be on the thinner side so now when I'm searching for a wig I'm trying to find something closer to that thickness true to what my natural thickness would be but maybe with like some added volume because there's nothing wrong with having a little more hair a little more to play with right what I am saying is pay attention to the density and how much hair that wig actually has. For example, if it's a human hair wig, they typically go by density. So if you're looking online at a wig shop and it's human hair wig, they're likely gonna say, oh, it's 130% density or 150 or 180. It can go, can go up to 200, right? 200 would be a lot of hair. So for myself, if I was to put on a wig that's 200% density, it's not gonna look natural on me. I've done it before, I've done it many, many times, and although it's fun, like I've done it for some photo shoots just to have fun, it's honestly way too much hair on me. So it's like a big chunk on this side, a big chunk on this side, and when you pull it together at the back, it's like this huge chunk of hair in a ponytail. So anybody looking at me is gonna know I have some sort of alternative hair in there. Now, if it's a higher quality wig, they may not, you know, first recognize it's a wig because we've come so far nowadays, guys, like, a lot of wigs do not look like wigs. But if the whole point of wearing a wig is to make it look as realistic as possible, then we really wanna be conscious about how much hair the wig actually has. For myself, my preferable density is between 130 to 150% in a human hair wig. That seems to fit me the best. I would love to just stick to 130 percentage, but a lot of times the wig companies will have that higher percentage. And then if I'm really in love with a style and it's like 150, okay, fine, I'll just get it, right? Because I know it's not gonna be too overly thick. It's gonna still look good, but I really wouldn't want any more than that for myself. Now, if you're someone who's maybe bigger boned or maybe naturally, like when you had healthy hair, like maybe you had a lot of hair, then I think you could totally get away with like 180%, maybe even 200%. Like that can look absolutely stunning on so many people. And honestly, I'm not saying I would never wear that because I have, I have worn that. It's just for myself because I am a petite person. I'm tall and I'm petite. More hair hair looks faker on me. I'm gonna put this Amazon box away. It's just completely annoying me. Excuse my little boxes everywhere, guys. We're having a baby shower really soon in a couple of weeks, right next to our wedding, actually. So like baby showers on the Friday, weddings on the Sunday, families flying out. It's gonna be like a jam-packed weekend. Because of that, like people have started sending me things off my registry, like people who are flying here. It's kind of like stockpiling in our room right now because we're also gonna move. So like 
Oh my goodness, there's so much going on, guys. So please ignore like the messiness all around me. Now, if it's a synthetic wig like this one, typically it doesn't say online, you know, what the exact density is because it's really the human hair wigs that goes by the density. So for this particular wig that I'm wearing, this is probably max amount of hair that I would want on my head because any more than this and it's gonna start looking fake on me. I like this wig because she's very voluminous. The cap design is really comfortable. I can do a lot of things with her and I think she's just like really pretty and goes with a lot of my outfits by the way guys anything I mention in this video or show you in this video everything will be down in the description for your convenience if you're looking for the exact same thing when talking about realism we also have to take a look at the cap so this is the next thing that I do when I'm looking at wigs online is I want to see pictures of the cap so I have an example here this one is from Amazon she was really really cheap and I bought her because she's just a fun wig to wear. She's a brunette. She's really silky. She's really soft. I really do like her. But she doesn't look the most natural on me as like, let's say this one does. This one is a lace front. This wig is not a lace front. So I'll show you what I mean. I would call this a hard front because it's sort of like a harsher line. Now this wig can get away with it because she has bangs. So the bangs actually covers that hard front. It covers the permatease that it has right at the front. And then it has, you know, that fake scalp. So she's really great if you're wanting just a cheap wig to throw on. I wear her if I know I'm gonna be going in the ocean, in the water, and I really don't wanna like have to worry about a super expensive wig getting ruined. This was a really good purchase for that. But is she the most natural that I own? No, absolutely not. And it's because of the hard front. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with purchasing a wig that has a hard front as opposed to a lace front wig where it looks like the hair is actually growing out of your scalp. But you just sort of have to keep in mind that bangs are important when you get a wig that has a hard front. And never would I ever pull the bangs aside to show that hard front because it's not gonna look natural in fact it's gonna look fake you'll notice that this one doesn't have a mono top it's just wefted at the back there's no lace like it's just a very basic cap design so there's nothing wrong with that guys that is why the price is cheaper but if we're talking realism and we're talking about something looking fake this one would look more fake versus you know this one so this is another hand tied wig. It has a lace front, you see? So it's similar to this, where the hair is just gonna grow on out of your scalp. And then it also has a mono top, which means when you part the hair on the very top of the wig, it's gonna look like scalp underneath. And I love that, I love mono tops. But are they absolutely necessary on every wig, every single time to look real? No because when I wear this one, remember she doesn't have a mono top, she will still look real on my head as long as I wear her exactly the way she's meant to be worn. I cannot adjust the parting space on this one. I can't remove the bangs. I can't part the bangs off to the side. If she gets in my face, she's just gonna be in my face. The other thing I wanna point out that I think makes a wig look really fake like something that always stands out to me, especially if I was to come up like this close to somebody, are the knots. If the knots are dark at the front, the little balls, like where the fibers or the hair is tied into the cap, you can see like little dots. That does not look real. That looks so fake in my opinion. Because if you're thinking of a natural head, like naturally growing out hair, you don't see like little dots, little knots, because your hair hasn't been tied into your scalp. You know what I mean? Um, like on this one, they did a beautiful job of blending the highlights up to the front. This is a Raquel Welch wig. And you can't see any knots because they've been bleached, okay? For me, it's a no-go. If the wig does not have bleach knots, I will not buy it because for me, it's a waste of money. Now, I'm a little hesitant saying that because I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wigs that don't have bleach knots. In fact, it's a way to keep the integrity of the hair. So I totally understand why brands don't bleach knots because what ends up happening when you bleach knots 
of the fiber or the human hair, it makes the fiber or the human hair a little weaker where they've tied it on. So over time, like if you were to pull on it, things like that, like eventually it could get thinner and thinner, fall out, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's why a lot of companies who don't bleach knots tell you it's really easy to just flip the wig over, take some concealer and put it on those darker knots to lighten them. And you know, they say that then it's like fixed, right? For me, I find it just doesn't fix as well as I want it to. So I would prefer to buy a wig that has bleach knots, even if it's just right up at the front. So like this wig, it only has bleach knots right up at the front. It doesn't go all the way back. If you look really close, you can see little knots, but that's okay to me because what's really noticeable is when I'm talking to people like this and they're looking at my wig, can they see little knots on my head? If they can't see the little knots, they're not gonna know it's a wig. If they can see the little knots, it's gonna cross their mind it's a wig. So that is the biggest giveaway, in my opinion, is if the knots are not bleached. Okay, so the other thing I would watch out for if you're trying to stay away from wigs that look fake, and if you really want the most realistic wig as possible, I would really say that a wig that has dimensional color is typically a little more realistic than a wig that is just a solid block color. So what I mean by that is, for example, if you were to look at this wig, it has lots of dimension. It has different colors in it. Yes, it is a blonde, but it's a dimensional blonde. So it's got a shadow root, meaning it's darker at the root. And then we have some platinum. We have some honey. We have a bit of beige in here. We have a lot of dimension. And so when someone sees this hair, they think you're fresh out of the salon. They're not thinking. It's a solid color and it's kind of not looking real. The other thing is I tend to prefer shadow root over just a blonde color growing out of my head because I find that the shadow root makes it look more natural. Now, I'm not saying people cannot pull off a wig if it doesn't have a root. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, I think some of the most beautiful wigs on the market right now are wigs that don't have a root and it makes that person look like, oh wow, like they're, they're a true blonde. You know what I mean? But with those particular wigs that don't have a shadow root, I just find, especially when I wear it, I need to take a little extra care because my bio hair is a darker color as you can see if I just had like bleach blonde growing out of my head I might have to wear a wig cap that is a nude color so that when I present the scalp or if I have a part on the wig it's gonna show a nude cap instead of showing my dark hair underneath because that would be a giveaway that's kind of why I also tend to gravitate towards shadow roots because my natural hair color is darker now if you're somebody who doesn't have any bio hair at all you can get away with anything anything at all you do not need a shadow root because what you're gonna see underneath is scalp your own scalp you don't have like darker bio hair over top of your scalp appearing under the wig and now you could say like well stephanie just wear like a wig cap then well i don't always like to wear wig caps i just like to throw a wig on my head and she's like ready to go sometimes i don't even like to wear wig grips so it's really important to me that i can just get up stick this on my head like this and go, go to work, go to brunch, go wherever, right? I don't wanna have to necessarily take those extra steps. So that is why I really prefer a shadow root. Not only that, but if my hair blew to the side and you see like this darker hair, no one's gonna think anything of it because it just looks like my shadow root, right? So keep that in mind. If you don't have any hair, you don't really have to worry about this. If you do have hair, maybe picking a shadow root color that is your natural bio hair color be a really good idea. So I hope that these things were somewhat helpful for you. Thank you so much for coming on, hanging out with me again today. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button because I'd love for you to come back. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.